And while this show is going on in public, the uh, well in the background, uh, the wrecking crew is working. Uh, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, uh, uh, the guys in the cabinet who write his uh, executive orders. And what they're doing is systematically dismantling every aspect of government that works for the benefit of the population. Uh, this goes from workers' rights to uh, uh, pollution, pollution, pollution of the environment, uh, uh, yeah, rules for uh, protecting consumers. I mean, anything you can think of is being dismantled. And all efforts are being devoted, kind of almost with fanaticism, to enrich and empower their actual constituency, which is super wealth and corporate power who are delighted. That's why the stock market goes up. Stock market has not much to do with the economy, but keeps booming because that's the rich people and they love being granted. Now, the NASCAR drivers all wear like the sponsorship on their uh, uniforms from the different companies that sponsor them. And I really think that in our Congress in the United States, every member of Congress should have to wear the <laughs> logos of every company that paid for them to get to Washington. If you have international capitalism, which is already operating on this scale, you also need an international progressive counter movement which would operate on the international level. The democratization of work, one worker, one vote, to decide what? What to produce, how to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the profits. That would be an alternative. And don't listen to people who tell you that sometimes war is necessary. War is never really necessary. War is a failure. This is where it all starts. You start a hub and the progressive thinkers come to that hub and they just keep building and that's how social movements start. That's how progressive movement starts and that's how we fight and end empire and end wars. We have to challenge that propaganda. We have to unmask the brutality of what's going on. And from there, I think we can find a much better system than what we have now. We are living in the most uh, decisive days of human civilization. I don't think it's an exaggeration. So we better get all our heads around framing everything we're talking about within the issue of saving the planet. And we know that means to change who has power. So there's, there's enormous public opposition that can be mobilized. The fact that they have to blank us out, that they have to disappear us, should be taken as testimony to how very powerful our movement is for people, for planet, and for peace over profit. We have a very powerful movement on each of those fronts, and if we join them together, we're absolutely unstoppable. You know, I think it's very important that in your politics um, that you embrace important principles of humanitarianism and peace. But at the same time, I think it's very important that those not stay abstract, that you practice those principles in your life as well. Um, and the more we just find ways to spread those values, just in small ways, focus first on your own individual behavior and ask what you can be doing more of to make the world a better place. Think about the opportunities that you have, right? Because there are no heroes. Nobody's going to save you, right? There are only heroic actions there are only heroic choices. There are only people who moment by moment see bad things and recognize, maybe I can do something. Maybe I can't fix everything, but maybe I can make progress. Maybe I can make things better. Maybe I am the one that I'm waiting for. And as soon as you start thinking like that, you'll realize that you are.